Welcome back to Limitless everyone. Thank you guys for joining me and today we're going to be finishing off the ducting for our radiator, getting it tied into the under tray system and wrapping that section up so we can move on to something else. So if you guys are new to the channel, I would very much appreciate you guys hitting the subscribe button and the little bell. Uh, we just hit a thousand subscribers last week, which is awesome news. I've been on YouTube not very consistently for 12 plus years, something like that. So yes, I would very much appreciate it. And if you're new to the build, pretty much hand building a 46 CJ2A Willys Jeep, slammed to the ground, turbo Hayabusa motor in it, um, got full push rod suspension on all four corners, the rear end will have a Porsche transaxle, so technically you have 30 forward gears and 6 reverse gears. Uh, the weight of that was really comparable to some, uh, you know, decent um, rear diffs so there was really no point in going that route and then I would have to come up with something for reverse anyways this way I have endless gearing options uh, you know maybe cruising the city in third in the Porsche and use all six on the bike and then you know when I'm hitting up the highway I can go fourth fifth on the trans and uh, yeah get some good gas mileage hopefully or maybe see how fast she'll run, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be getting into some more aluminum, so I'm sure that there's gonna be some outtakes, so if you guys wanna see them, they'll be at the end of the film again. All right, I want to make sure that this one works really well. So I went out, I got this big old slab of aluminum and then a piece of thin eighth inch steel to go on top because you don't want to be welding aluminum on top of aluminum if you need to weld right at the seam. Um, kind of going to be a nice little heat sink. Hopefully it keeps it, everything nice and flat. So let's get it all mounted on there. I swear I forget something every freaking time. So now that everything obviously completely moved, I gotta let this cool right down, put it back in the car and see if this is remotely in the right spot anymore. Uh, if it is, then I can put in the back piece and then get those really well tacked and then start building the sides.
took a ton of time, like three days worth of work to get to this point. So I'm just gonna pause here for a moment, let you guys judge me on my aluminum welds, and then I'm gonna grind them all off so nobody else will ever know. Yeah, not nice. All right, as you can see, you got, yeah, most of the grinding done on it. Um, it sits in there, it's still nice and flat, which I was really concerned about. But, but we did have one major issue while doing it. Um, unfortunately, when I was tacking the very first sides here, there was a bit of a gap right here. So it took a little bit longer to actually fill it and I melted the fan shroud. And it was actually, it was fine being melted, but it was stuck inside of the ring and I couldn't pull it out, so it ended up breaking. And these stupid seven inch fans, well, they're more expensive than a 12 inch. It's ridiculous. So, I think what I'm going to do, rather than buying a new one, uh, I think I'm going to build a mount for this without the shroud, right inside of there, and then I'm gonna have a rubber gasket, uh, kind of like, well they have like a, a flange where you push it onto here, and then the other side has a big, uh, just a round, hollow two basically and that'll seal against the rad uh, but before I can do that I need to see where it sits in relation to the rad uh, I might have to weld another ring onto that side and put the flange on there I'm not sure yet so here's kind of what I mean I, I might have to weld this onto here just to get it close enough Okay, if it would act like this all the time, I'd be very happy. Unfortunately, I am certain this is gonna go to trap near the end here, or very soon. And the other thing I will have to do is drill a hole. Uh, I'd like to find a firewall type connector that has a connector on both sides. So my wire harness can be plugged into one side and this can be plugged into this side. I haven't found one of those yet, so.
Awesome. Got tons of flow underneath. That's just the bottom plate that's vibrating. Uh, so once I get this seal into here as well, it'll kind of tighten up the diameter just a little more. If the 2x4s weren't there holding up the Jeep, I think it would just shoot back underneath because you can really feel it back here and not a lot right here, which is exactly what you want. Very happy the way that turned out. Never want to have to do it again unless I have a new welder. Okay, just to show off of the final piece. I uh, kept the blades out just to show you guys. Maybe a little more grinding to do. I had a few spots where I ground through, so I had to re-weld them. Uh, you can see that it is a nice transition. Coming back out. And should definitely do the trick. Uh, so that is one big project checked off and we can move on to the next thank you guys very much for watching and see you on the next one all right so no real surprise here but i screwed up that first bottom plate I'm not too sure what happened. I somehow put the the second line in the wrong spot. So when I actually cut out the opening, it was way too big. So I tried to fill in the piece and everything was clamped down nicely, welded it really slow. And when I took off the clamps, it was warped beyond recognition. I tried shrinking everything back down where it needed to and stretching certain parts and hammering it down and just junk. So I got to start over. Uh, I got another piece. Got to make this cut. Unfortunately, it's not going to be nearly as nice as their shear would have been. But we'll start over. We'll get that done. And then we'll cut out the opening and start from scratch again. Dude, you're kicking your own ass. I'm kicking my ass, dear boy!